What's up, everybody? I'm joined here by Al Sacco of Fourth and Nine and 49ers Web Zone. Al, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for being on. Uh, so today was a pretty big day with the 49ers. Um, I know a lot of people were thinking, you know, it's going to be kind of a quiet day, draft day, but they made some moves. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about it. We could start with uh, yesterday, or excuse me, Friday. Or I guess it is yesterday, Thursday. I'm all, I'm all over the place. <laughs> uh, the first round, the 49ers, there was a lot of talk of them moving back, acquiring some picks due to their lack of picks. Um, that didn't really happen. I mean, they traded down one pick from 13 to 14. Um, do you think that the offers weren't right for them to trade back into the second round, kind of acquire more picks? Or do you think they weren't aiming to do that to begin with? I think that they had the guys that they wanted. And for me going into this draft, I really believed that they had to get a couple of impact players because they weren't as good of a team as a team that walked off the field in that Super Bowl to me. And the reason for that was, is you lose to Forrest Buckner and you lose Emmanuel Sanders. And you look at the defensive line first. Everybody says, well, this is a deep group. This is a deep group. It really wasn't because... Coming back, you, you had Jones, you had Bosa, you had 40 at Armstead. You feel good about those guys. But beyond that, Ronald Blair's coming off an ACL. Julian Taylor's coming off an ACL. Contavious Street has been injured. Um, you know, Solomon Thomas hasn't played up to what we'd hoped. So they did need some help there. So I, I thought that they were going to go defense, and I thought they were going to adjust that line because, listen, that's how they're built. So if Kinlaw was the guy that they thought could come in and make an impact, I, I, I really do believe they were content in taking him. And the same thing with Sanders. You saw what happened when he came into the fold last year and how well they did in, in the passing game because they struggled before he got there. So they really needed to get somebody else to step in there and take some pressure off Debo, take some pressure off Kittle. And um, the receiver position was, I thought, was huge for them just as much as the defensive tackle was. So I really believe those were two positions that they wanted to fill. And I think that they did that. Yeah, that's a good point, you know, um, and there's a lot, a lot of talk necessarily. I've heard people say that, you know, taking Kinlaw uh, 14 overall was more of like a luxury pick. And, you know, I, I guess I could see that, but I, I think that they were kind of seeing tit for tat, eye for an eye. They lose Buckner and they're able to plug it with mm -hmm. Kinlaw. Uh, they lose Sanders and then they they pick up a guy like Brandon Ayuk. Um, and, you know, speaking of Brandon Ayuk, they passed on Jerry Judy and CD Lamb to take Javon Kinlaw. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that that was their right choice to, to, to do that? I really felt that it was time for them to get a big time receiver. And you look at there's all this pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo and he's got to get better with this and he play well in the playoffs. So you got to give him weapons, man. I, I really felt you couldn't go into the season with just really Kittle and Debo as your top two passing targets. There's not much else there. Bourne's a terrific role player, but I don't think he's the type of guy you can count on for six catches a game and a hundred yards, that type of thing. He makes big catches, but I, I don't think he's a necessarily a consistent threat. And beyond those three guys, there wasn't much there in the passing game. So yeah, when Lamb and Judy were there, I said, you got to take one of these guys. So I was surprised that they didn't. And then with Kinlaw, you know, they are built around the defensive line. So they took him and, and the next pick had to be a receiver. And look for Shanahan, if, if I was the guy that he, that he wanted, if he was the number one guy on his board, then, you know, I guess who are we to argue? Kyle knows more about his offense than we do. It's not where I would have went. I, I would have definitely gone with Lamb or Judy and gotten what I thought a guy who could really come in and be that number one guy. And listen, maybe, maybe their guy can, but we'll see what happens. But if, if that was Shanahan's guy and he went out and got him good for them, they hopefully got two guys that are going to step in and make that impact that I was talking about. Yeah. You know, that's a good point. And, and that actually, you know, leads me to my next question Afterwards, they were kind of talking to uh, Brandon Ayuk. It looked like on a FaceTime call and both Kyle and John. I mean, when they made the pick, they were ecstatic. They were so happy. And it was almost like I was kind of sitting there thinking, like, I get it. This is, you know, a great wide receiver. Brandon Ayuk is, is fantastic. But you mm -hmm. passed on Jerry Judy and CD Lamb to get it. And then it kind of came out that Brandon Ayuk was their number one target. They had them ranked number, uh, wide receiver one. Uh, do you think that really is the case? And if so, what did they see in him that the rest of the league kind of didn't, or at least didn't value as much as they did with the other two receivers? Because other than Ruggs, they had their chance at any receiver they, they wanted. And if they wanted Judy and Lamb that bad, I, I believe that they would they would have taken them. But Shanahan has his guys. He has guys that he likes. He's got a certain type of receiver that, that he wants. He, he, he To me, Shanahan... He has faith in his offense. So he looks at a guy that fits well in his offense, maybe rather than somebody who would, you know, 
looked like a big target or a guy that can come in and just dominate a game. Shanahan's looking for a guy that fits his offense. And I think Ayuk does that in the way that, that he's got that run after the catchability. And look, Garoppolo is a very accurate passer in, in the short game, 10 to 15 yards. And you got a guy like Debo who's great after the catch. You got a guy like Ayuk who's after the catch. So for Shanahan, he sees a guy like him and he thinks he could scheme him open. And then you're going to get all those big plays after the catch. So that's probably what he saw in him. And if he said he was his number one guy, considering where he took him in the guys that he passed up on. I believe it. And yeah, I think you have to believe it. Now I, I know on Twitter, I saw a lot of people back and forth where they weren't sure about the pick. And I think that comes from Shanahan's kind of had, he's picked two receivers high, right? Debo looks great. Pettis was a bust. So, or he appears to be a bust anyway. So people feel right now, like, well, can we trust the pick? We're kind of 50, 50 on it, but only time will tell. But the way I look at it, like I said, Kyle knows his offense, Kyle knows guys that are going to fit in there. And if he's the person who thought was going to be the best fit in this draft, have to see how it turns out. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. And I saw, um, I think Grant Cohn actually tweeted out the list of guys that Kyle Shanahan, or at the front office, I should say, has traded up to get. And it, it's not it's not good names, you know. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. So hopefully this breaks the mold. Hopefully this, uh, you know, Brandon IU comes in and, and, and blows out of the water. And, and that that is my next question, actually. Who do you think is more capable of coming in day one and, and contributing between Brandon Ayuk and Javon Kinlaw? Oh, it's got to be Kinlaw. Wide receiver is so difficult to come in right away and make an impact. You look at the year Debo had, he had 820 yards receiving. That was the second most for a rookie in 49ers history. Only Jerry Rice had more. So seasons like that don't come along very often. So it's going to be tough for Ayuk at first. He's going to have to you know, get, a, get accustomed to that playbook. And they may not even have offseason with the way things are going with, with the pandemic and everything else. So who knows what training camp is going to be, who, who knows about our OTAs. So it could be tough for him to come in and learn the playbook. So I think Kinlaw is going to be the guy that, that can step in right away and, and, and make an impact, especially with people around him with Armstead and Bosa and Ford and Jones, with those guys sharing the line with him, he's not going to get a lot of the attention. So he could definitely come in and I think make the impact sooner. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of forgetting how different this year is going to be because of the pandemic uh you know i think the saints came out saying they weren't going to have an off-season program at all um and that you know we'll see if teams follow suit Uh, i'm sitting Mm -hmm. here chatting with al sacco of fourth and nine and 49ers web zone um al what do you think the logic was of not addressing the secondary when there are so many expiring contracts coming up after this season yeah, I don't know. And I, I was talking to somebody earlier and I, I kind of compared it to a couple years ago when they didn't have an edge rusher and they didn't address it. It was a year where they had Cassius Marsh and they were like, oh, we'll see who else. It's just was a little bit strange to me because you do look at that secondary. They set for this year. Yes, ab- absolutely. They should be fine. But Sherman's contract is expiring. Witherspoon's contract is expiring. Tarts is expiring. Um Quan Williams is expiring. So that's that's a little bit scary to think where they're going to be two years from now. And, and maybe just next year, that's what they're going to do. They're going to address the secondary. That's that's going to be the big thing. But I thought they would. I actually thought C.J. Henderson would have a chance to be a pick. And obviously he went before they picked, but I don't even think he was on their radar. But it's something they're definitely going to, they're going to have to extend these guys or do something next year. But I was a little bit surprised. They didn't at least take a flyer on a guy in, in the later rounds. I, I take, a, I don't know who the undrafted free agents are yet. I don't know if those have been announced as of when we're talking, but I wouldn't be surprised if they take a flyer on some cornerbacks there, but we'll have to see. It's going to be something definitely to watch after this season. I think that'll be the big position that they target. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I was kind of shocked. Um, you know, they must be banking on, how how well their defensive line is going to play out. Um, I was talking about with the rest of the 49ers 5 team, and we were saying perhaps they're really, really putting all of their coins in the defensive line, being so stout and so elite that the secondary isn't really going to have to play at a really, really high level in order to, to be successful. Um, so I guess that remains to be seen how that's going to play out. It worked pretty well for them last season, but I, I don't think you can expect... Uh, a secondary to play historically good two years in a row. I just don't think it's going to happen. Now today, obviously there was some really, really big news. Uh, The 49ers made a number of moves. Probably the biggest would be acquiring left tackle Trent Williams from the Washington Redskins. Um, They traded a 2025th and a 2021 third round pick in exchange for him. Um, Do you think this proves that they are in fact in win now mode? 
Oh yeah. They wanted to run this thing back and you, you look at the people they lost. So they lose Buckner, they lose Sanders and now they ultimately lose Staley And the three big pieces they plug in are Kinlaw, Ayuk and Trent Williams. They just replace those guys that they lost and they're going to run this thing back. Now, will those guys fare as well as the people that they lost? Only time will tell. We don't know what the, how these guys are going to play with the Niners. You assume Trent Williams is going to be fantastic, but the rookies, you just don't know. But I think they really were trying to run this thing back this year. And we'll see with Williams after the season, because it doesn't look like they're going to sign into an extension, at least right now. So do they let him walk? Do they clear money and you don't get a comp pick next year? Do they clear money by getting rid of somebody like Ford next year to re-sign Williams? That'd be really interesting to see. But no, they're in it to go forward again this season. And it's it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, you lose somebody like Staley. And, and honestly, you know, we all love Staley, but Williams is an upgrade at this point. So it's going to be exciting to see this offense go with him at left tackle next year. And the Niners, hopefully, you know, there's going to be a lot of competition with the Saints and the Bucks. And the Seahawks are always tough, just to name a few teams. But the Niners should be right up there with the other Super Bowl contenders again. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I mean, they it's almost like they're in win now mode, but if you know they have the opportunity to extend Trent Williams, and then it kind of sets them up for a longer period of time. So it, it's interesting to see how they're gonna play this. Um, and then yeah. also later on in the day, they announced that they traded Matt Breda to Miami for a 2020 fifth rounder. Um, how much confidence do you put in the running backs room? And do you think uh, Jarek McKinnon will finally contribute this year? You know, with Breda, I was always a big Breda guy. And I know he really struggled at the end of the season with where he struggled fumbling, which he never, never had before. And he was obviously in Kyle's doghouse because he didn't touch the ball hardly in the playoffs. So I, the thing with Breida too is, you know, you, you say you just plug in a running back in Cal Shanahan system and they're going to do fine. Well, you look at the yards per carry for the guys that they had since they've had Shanahan and Mostert's been fantastic. He's had six yards of carry. Um, Tevin Coleman, only four yards of carry. Um, Jeff Wilson, who I know he does a lot of goal line work, but he's only at four yards of carry. Carlos Hyde was 3.9. Alfred Morris was 3.9. Matt Breida was five yards of carry and he had two seasons back to back of over five yards of carry. He had a lot of big runs for them. So I, I think he's gonna he is gonna be missed, but you'll have the one two punch of Mostert and Coleman. Other than a few games last year, I wasn't. I don't think Coleman really played super well. He had the big game against Carolina. He had another hundred yard game during the season, and then he did play well in the playoffs. I'll give him that. He definitely bounced back, but during the regular season, he he had a lot of rough games there. I think Mostert's going to be the guy that's going to get sixty percent of the carries, and then you'll see Coleman as the number two guy. Wilson, I think, is you know, is a short yardage guy. He's somebody who can make an impact. But you asked about McKinnon. We'll see. I, I can't put a lot of faith in a guy who hasn't been on the field in two years. I think they have to look at it as anything we get from him as a plus. If he's healthy and they can get him in the mix, great. But I, I just don't think he's somebody you can count on right now. We'll just have to wait and see what happens when the season starts and if, if he's healthy and how his knee responds. But right now, I'd look at that running back room as Mostert, who earned – to be as much of a number one guy in the system as, as you can be, because they'll, they'll always kind of go with committee hot hand. But most are earned to be getting you know 15 carries a game, I think, and then Coleman can maybe do five or six, and we'll see how else they do it. But if if the group stays healthy, I I, I think that they're okay. Um, running back is kind of a plug and play position these days. Um, you know, diamond dozen with some of these guys, but I think they're in really good shape with the guys that they have as long as injuries don't don't kill them. Yeah, you know, that's a good point, especially, you know, Kyle Shanahan's offense. Like you said, you can kind of plug and play guys and they're able to just, you know, have success no matter matter who it is. It seems like uh, Jeff Wilson was like a, a diamond in the rough that they found and they were able to plug and have pretty good success. Uh, uh, excuse me, pretty good amount of success with. Um, now, last question here. As of right now, with uh, the draft over and uh, the 49ers kind of yield looking like minus undrafted free agency that hasn't really concluded yet. Would you say right now that they are in a better position to set up a Super Bowl run next year than they were at the end of the season? I still don't think so because you don't know what you what you're going to get from the rookies. You knew what you were going to get from Buckner and Sanders. You don't know what you're going to get from the guys that you're bringing in. And another thing with Buckner that that's kind of, was has kind of been lost. We talked about his production. He was an Iron Man. He he only missed one game his entire career. He started every other game. It was 15 games his rookie year, and then he started every game since. So he played a lot of snaps. He was on the field. He was, he was an Iron Man. He was 
probably the second best player. I, I'd probably put Bosa over him arguably last year, but he was definitely at worst the second best player on the defense, I think. Best player of the year before. So you're you're taking a guy out who's really, really difficult to replace. I, I don't think Kinlaw can come in and have that kind of an impact. He, maybe eventually, but as a rookie, I, I I don't think so. And Sanders too, you know, he's, he's a savvy vet. I know he only he had a few big games too, but he still had big catches. He was still somebody Garoppolo trusted. So I just don't think you're going to bring in two rookies that are going to be as good as those guys. You have to hope that Garoppolo gets a little bit better and Debo improves and Trent Williams helps solidify, you know, the whole offensive line in pass protection and Brunskill is better than person in pass protection. And those things kind of pick up the guys that they lost. Defensively, they're still built around that defensive line. The secondary, I, I still think will be good enough next year. Hopefully Sherman can fight off age and still play pretty well, but the linebacker group is good. They're still a Super Bowl contender. They're still a playoff team. Do I think they're as good of a team as they were last year? No, because Buckner and Sanders are such huge losses. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't think a lot of people are talking about um, the, the factor that DeForest Buckner did only miss one game in his whole career, like you said. Um, he's, you know, Kinlaw's got some pretty big shoes to fill right away. And when, when a situation happens like that, where you're traded and then you're, you know, somebody's immediately taken to replace that guy, it's almost like that shadow is always going to be cast over uh, Kinlaw and he's always going to be compared to DeForest Buckner no matter what he does. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. I think the 49ers, they did a pretty good job for the most part of trying to plug the holes that they lost, um, you know, tit for tat, like I said earlier. So it remains to be seen how things uh, turn out. Al, I want to thank you for joining me. Um, everybody, make sure you go follow Al on Twitter. Uh, his his uh, tag is below on the screen. Um, anything else you want to say before we wrap it up here? Uh, let's just hope the season starts on time and, and, and the Niners can run this thing back and, and be right back in Super Bowl contention again. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Thank you.